Uh, make sure I can see what's going on. Okay, I've got my pink sheet. Not, not the icky pink sheet, but a good pink sheet. To be able to start off worshiping our Lord the new week. Welcome to each of you. Thank you for being out and about. Starting off the week as God's people, being able to thank Him for providing for us short term, long term, and past and present and still to come. We're so thankful to know that. So many people don't know God. They don't know His love for them and plan. So we're so thankful for that. Thankful that we have a new day He has given to us and the grace to know Him and come to worship Him. I appreciate you being here today. Why don't we acknowledge that together with our response read there from Psalm 118. This is the day the Lord has made. So let us rejoice and be glad in it. It's a real quick note. There's not a whole lot going on the bulletin list this week, but do notice that we're having the first ever of the Christmas in July craft sale provided by the quilting ladies. And there's more about that in the bulletin, so it won't take a lot of time, but just making sure you see that that's this week. And if you'd like to come and be able to participate, purchasing some things, great. If you want to participate in bringing and having a table with it, you can do that still too. Just contact on the office and we'll get you set up. So, well, let's begin then, shall we, as worshiping our Lord in another new day, a new week in His house and in His presence. The Almighty God, that we are here to praise together, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. All right, my honey's going to come on up, and let's go ahead and start praising our Lord with our song together. We'll do the one called Trust in You. It's been a little while since we've sang it, but a great song being able to say, God, there's a lot of crazy stuff going on in the world around us, maybe in our own lives, but I trust in you. I know you're going to see me through it, and that's what I'm hanging into. And so we can encourage each other with that again together today. <clears throat> Letting go of every single dream I lay each one down at your feet Every moment of my wandering Never changes what you see I've tried to win this war I confess My hands are weary I need your rest Mighty warrior, king of the fight No matter what I face, you're by my side When you don't move the mountains, I need you to move When you don't part the waters, I wish I could walk through When you don't give the answers, as I cry out to you I will trust, I will trust, I will trust in you Truth is you know what tomorrow brings There's not a day ahead you have not seen So in all things be my life and bread I want what you want, Lord, and now Trust in you. You are my 
Easy to say, not always easy to do, is it? And that's something that in order to trust the Lord, of course, we've always got to have the heart that says, I believe you, I believe in you, and I know that you are telling the truth. When you tell me I can trust you, you're going to see me through this. So let's stand and let's reinforce that desire as God's people too. We want to be closer to the Lord as time goes on, to be able to trust him because we understand what he said, because we spent time with him. His spirit has encouraged our hearts. So let's sing the old classic beautiful song, Just a Closer Walk with Thee. That's our prayer again today, that God will draw us continually closer to him and be able to have that trust that goes with that. Walk, 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 just a closer walk with thee. I am weak, but thou art strong. Jesus, keep me from all wrong. I For today too just lord draw me closer to you help me to trust you and to have that peace you with me now and you with me even through death into life everlasting that's god's gift to us and it involves what we do next being able to have the forgiveness for our sins that jesus alone can and does give to us we have no business saying i can't wait to be in with the lord forever if we didn't have his forgiveness, if we had to earn our way into heaven, we'd all be messed up and never make it. So we take time together each week to say, God, please forgive me for Jesus' sake, because I can't be perfect by any means. I need you. I need a Savior. So we all together honestly admit that together and in faith ask for that forgiveness in Christ's name. And then we trust when he tells us, yes, that's exactly what I came for. I achieved and I love and give that to you. So in that trust, and let's ask for that forgiveness with a drawing back closer to God prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you for choosing to love and reach out to me with your grace and favor. 
I admit to you and to all my brothers and sisters here today that I am a sinner, guilty of thinking, saying, and doing wrong, guilty of failing to think, say, and do right according to your holy standards. In Jesus' name, I do ask for your forgiveness for my sins, especially the following areas of my life that I need your extra help with. Let's continue then together. Thanks and praise to you, dear Lord, for your cleansing and for giving me time still in this world to help others know of your mercy and redemption. Help me navigate through these uncertain times with your certain guidance, help, and love. Renew my heart to deep compassion for the people all around me and help me to share you with them by my words and my actions. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. We do remember at the very core of why we have hope in a future to look forward to is that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself and not holding our sins against us. That's in 1 Corinthians 5. God says, you know what? He says, you're right. You need forgiveness. You can't do it. I can and I choose to. His choice to bring us to faith, his choice to forgive our sins, his choice to draw us through life one day after another, his choice to raise us up from when we've died to be alive, body and soul, to be with him forever in heaven. It's all to rightly praise be to God. Our trust is in God. Our peace is in God. And that's what binds us to the Lord and to each other is what he has done. So praise the Lord along with me for his mercy towards us, his forgiveness. He has forgiven our sins. He gives us a new start again today in his grace. We're going to need it today, tomorrow, next day, and it's there for us in him. So have a seat, if you will. Let's continue to praise our Lord and trust in him and grow in what he has said to us. We'll do that at this point now with the first of the Experiencing God readings. If you look with me at Colossians chapter 1 this morning, beginning with verse 20, or excuse me, yeah, Chapter 1, beginning with verse 21. Here, I've got my thing mixed up here. Sorry about this, folks. Let's get that fixed. There we go. All right, Colossians 1, verse 21 to 29. And that's on page 1832 in the Pew Bibles. Or if you've got your own Bible, it's always great to grab a hold and look with me here. But let's see this where the Lord talks about the blessing of being able to be connected to God and to carry out his work, not to earn our way to heaven, but to carry out his work because he's already forgiven our sins and we enjoy being able to serve him in thankfulness to him for all he's already done. So Colossians 1, starting with verse 21, says, Once you were alienated from God and were enemies in your minds because of your evil behavior, but now he has reconciled you by Christ's physical body through death to present you holy in his sight without blemish and free from accusation if you continue in your faith, established and firm, not moved from the hope held out in the gospel. This is the gospel that you heard and that has been proclaimed to every creature under heaven, and of which I, Paul, have become a servant. Now I rejoice in what was suffered for you, and I fill up in my flesh what is still lacking in regard to Christ's afflictions for the sake of his body, which is the church. I have become its servant by the commission God gave me to present to you the word of God in its fullness, the mystery that has been kept hidden for ages and generations, but is now disclosed to the saints. To them God has chosen to make known among the Gentiles the glorious riches of his mystery, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. So we proclaim him admonishing and teaching everyone with all wisdom so that we may present everyone perfect in Christ. 
To this end thy labor, struggling with all his energy, which so powerfully works in me. This is in first reading from the word of the Lord. Let's see what, we'll wait for the kiddos for next week. We'll do our message with them. And in this case, then, Zizi's going to come back up and we're going to do a song we haven't done for a long time, but it applies very much to this being able to trust and be at peace with the Lord when we've got a lot going in our lives and hearts and uncertainties. It's good to remember Jesus saying to us, don't let your heart be troubled. Trust in the Father and trust in me. We're going to sing that song called Let Not Your Heart Be Troubled. We haven't done this for a while, but it's a great classic. And let's praise the Lord for the gift he gives to us to be at peace because he is our God and we are his own. a closer walk with thee and yet it hasn't gone out of fashion yet has it to be able to say thank you Lord that you're the way the truth and the light let not your heart be troubled because you are in charge and I'm good with that it's a tough time we live in right now sometimes and to be able to say I'm at peace I'm okay everything's fine when's the last time you told somebody everything's fine with me well, maybe when you were walking and said hello to the grocery store and didn't want to get into all the things you're worried about. How are you? I'm fine today. Reality, I guess I've maybe experienced that. I'm sure you have too. A lot of people seem like there's a lot going on, a lot bubbling, whether it's underneath the surface, whether it's on the, on the surface and all over the place. There's just a lot of reasons that people are, they kind of seem to me, I, I guess I feel this too, 
walking around with that sense of, okay, what else is going to happen now? You ever get that sense for life day to day? You're almost afraid to open up the shades and to look out and say, okay, what else is going to happen today? And that, that trigger that they call is what anxiety is. Anxiety being that I am fearful that something's not right here. Ever felt that before? I am fearful that something is not right here. The anxiety comes from the old word that means that you're having something that's choking you or something that's narrowing that you have to fit through is tighter than what you want it to be and it's uncomfortable, it's dangerous perhaps to you. The idea of being under pressure. Do you feel pressure from a lot of sides in the days that we live in right now? Oh my goodness, it's not hard to have it happen, is it? You look at uh, inflation for one thing, that's squishing everybody so tight and we're all looking at our budgets saying there is no budget anymore compared to what it used to be. But how do we do this? How long is this going to go on? And the unrest with all the political back and forth was so vehemently on both sides with different people. You look at all that's going on in the world with war being fought and possibly going to spread further again. And, and this, uh, there's so much stuff that just, you know, normal stuff's hard enough, isn't it? Then you add all that extra stuff on top of it, and that's not, in the, including if you have health issues all of a sudden that show up, or you have uh, relationship issues that show up, other things that can add tremendously to the pressure they're squeezing too. I think that you can kind of picture, uh, those of you who have jo driven in Jonesboro before, you may have been down a strip that when my kids were going to college back there years ago, go down to visit them at their apartment. To turn off their apartment, there was, it was kind of the main Red Wolf Boulevard, the big double wide, one of the biggest heavy traffic roads down there in Jonesboro. <laughs> And you're hauling along, and yes, yeah, busy, but there's two roads together, one by side, you know, two, four lanes all together. And you go across from this one stoplight, and all of a sudden, literally all of a sudden, the right lane says, okay, we're done now. Go within about 150 feet over and be a part of the left lane. Now, that wouldn't be so bad at midnight. But when you're in the middle of traffic in the busiest time of the day and there's 18 people behind you, they're all wanting to just drive over top of you so they can get somewhere faster anyway. And then you got to take two lanes of full busy traffic and squish them into one in a very short distance. And you've got an option of figuring, okay, do I try to butt in in front of this truck that's three times as big as me behind me and hope he doesn't roll over top of me? Or do I just go over to the right and just wait at the edge of the road until hopefully I can find an opening someplace? What should I do? Ah! That idea of narrowing is the sense that we can well describe what the word anxiety was just meant for us to understand. You have a heart attack. That's because the narrowing of the vessels in your heart are not getting enough blood they need to be okay. So your heart's starting to scream. It says, something wrong here. I need help. Anxiety is by nature. It's a being in a place of where I need help. Now, anxiety can be a good thing. and that It's one of the ways that God has built us to be prepared to react quickly to when there's a threat, a danger that we are facing. We talk about that. What would you do if you're walking along in a national park somewhere, having a great time, vacationing with your family, and relaxing, enjoying beautiful nature? And all of a sudden, the big grizzly bear comes at you. Okay, let's say it's about, well, we'll be generous, 50 feet away from you, all right? All right? How many times do you think when you're facing that situation, do you say to the family, okay, family, let's get together. We're going to have a powwow. I want to hear from everybody what you would recommend as to how we should deal with this. Okay, Johnny, you go first. Yeah, how long would that work? You know, we have to worry about what to do anymore because you'd all be dead in the grizzly's belly, right? So when you got a grizzly coming at you and you know you got to do something, God has designed us. When we get anxious, we tend to do one of two things. We don't stop and think about it. We either have to fight and try to stop whatever it is that's threatening us, or we have to run away and get away from it, or it's going to shred us. So in a bear's case, you better have some kind of weapon. You better have some kind of a way that you're able to chase him down and make him scared of you, or you better be fast at climbing a tree. You know, run away. That's the only two options you really have in a dangerous situation like that. So that 
It's good to be able to have anxiety sometimes because it keeps us safe in a time of danger. We call it prolonged anxiety, the sense of I'm not okay, not just at the moment because there's a bear about ready to eat me, but I wake up today and what else is going to happen now? What's going to try to get me? And you feel like you're narrowed and squeezed and life is just going to keep pressing on you. And that wears a person out. It's very hard. And sometimes when we're anxious a lot like that, then we only make one of two choices, fight or run away. And that's not the best choice. That's not the best way to deal with things going on. So God knows how hard it is to live in this world. He knows all the day-to-day stuff bad enough. And you add extra things on top of it. He says, I understand. He says, you're but dust. He says, I know you're not God, and I am. But that's why I'm there for you. But sometimes we can forget that, and we can let anxiety really grab hold of us. And a lot of us are feeling a lot of anxiety right now, and just this sense of being narrowed and squeezed and choked. And so in the midst of that, this passage that we want to look at for the second part of Experiencing God and His Word today, Luke chapter 10, beginning with the 38th verse, that's on page 1613 in the Pew Bibles, it's one of the classic places where God addresses this different ways that people can respond to the anxieties that's going on in a way that he wants to encourage us the good way to be able to address it. It be helpful for us to remember, helpful for us to share with people in our lives that we know that maybe are dealing with a lot of anxiety going on in their lives and hearts right now. So Luke chapter 10, starting with verse 38. It says, as Jesus and his disciples were on their way, he came to a village where a woman named Martha opened her home to him. Already anxiety bells going off for Martha probably, right? You ever had that happen where you have your home, you have your routine, you have what you're comfortable with, you're used to, how your habits go day to day, and then somebody calls and says, hey, how are you doing? We haven't seen each other for a long time. We're going to be in your area here next week. Can we stop in and see you for a while? Sure, you tell them. It'd be great. I'd love to see you. Can't wait. Looking forward to it. All right, be safe. Drive careful. See you then. Bye. Oh, no. Then you start looking around your house and thinking, oh, how's my house doing? And you know how that is. We all tend to be this way where you're used to this, taking care of your routine, your normal, blah, blah, blah. In your own home, it's like, I've got this big pile. I won't tell you another pile, but just we'll talk about the one. Whereas all this stuff I need to take care of at some point. I don't want to do it right now, so I'll get to it. And I'm pretty comfortable going for several days and I would never really see in it. Because you get used to seeing it and ignoring it, right? Well, now when company's coming, you think they're going to say, oh, that's a nice looking pile you've got there on that hut, you know? So you're like going, oh, and start thinking about, Somebody's coming to the house. It changes your perspective, doesn't it? When Jesus came into people's lives, that happened too. Was that a bad thing? Sometimes we think, I wish wish company wouldn't come because I don't want to have to be stressed about the company coming. But how would we be if nobody ever came to our house or spent any time with us? That's with the Lord too. Sometimes people say, "Mm, I don't want to deal with God. I don't want him coming and butting his nose into my heart, my life, my routine, my comforts, my way of doing and thinking things. Jesus, just go visit somebody else. But Jesus came to Martha's house because he loved her and she needed him. Jesus comes to your and my house because he loves us and we need him. It's good, even though it's hard sometimes. It's good when God brings anxiety to our hearts in that he makes us stop and think, what's going on day to day? In relationship to the Lord being in my life, to be thankful for the good routines that are there and to realize there's some other things I've gotten used to doing that that's not so great. And to be able to say, thank you, Lord, that you love me enough to come and visit my house, my heart, and to be with me. So let's see what happens with her then when Jesus comes to her. All right, verse 39 says, She had a sister called Mary who sat at the Lord's feet listening to what he said. But Martha was distracted by all the preparations 
that had to be made. Uh, fit in one of those categories, can you say? I like to focus on the relationship part, talk to the people. Who cares what the house looks like? Or you one that says, I can't sit and talk and relax when the house is in shambles, when the food's not prepared yet, when people aren't happy and rejoicing and settled and comfortable. And yeah, we got two different people, different personalities here and, and normal routines of what they have. What to me is really interesting about this and looking at this a little bit closer, when God wrote this in the original Greek language, he used some words that were kind of specific that really brings out to me an interesting contrast between these two, how they reacted to Jesus coming to the house to be with them, interrupt their normal routine. It says that the sister Mary sat at the Lord's feet and listened to what he said. The original Greek words that are in there talks about what we do as a habit. Now think about that, the meaning for that when you apply it. Mary who was used to sitting at the Lord's feet and had a habit of listening to what he said. So, do you think she had Jesus there physically all the time? No, because Jesus being physically in the world can only be so many places, so many times, right? But she was listening to his word. What else his word besides out of his mouth? all the Bible that he had written as God, you know. She was used to, as part of her habit, her practice of saying, this is important. To take time to get aside from all the riffraff craziness going on and to listen to what God has to say. And God had allowed her to build that good routine. So when he in physical presence is in their house, literally... It was no big deal for her to do what she was used to. That's an amazing gift that God gave to her. And we say, Lord, that's what I want too for me. Many of you are already doing that. And it's awesome. Regular time with God daily in his word and prayer time. That's awesome. It's important. It's so much what we need. But some of us are going the other side, kind of a little bit the Mary's or the Martha side, like she was distracted rather than sitting and listening to Jesus. She had other things that needed to be done. Can you relate to that? It's easy for us, and I'm guilty of it sometimes too, being able to say, yeah, I want to take that time to read the Bible and be in prayer and make sure it's all ready to go and good, adequate time and focus. But I got to take care of this. You know, the panic of the urgent that comes at you. And it doesn't take long before it's like you're distracted. The, the word here that's literally used is, is habitually distracted. That she was used to being distracted. And another word that's literally says to be torn from. Think about that. She was habitually torn from listening to the Lord by all that had to be done. Is that easy to have happen in the world that we live in? Very easy for me. Many of us sit around and say, yeah, I can wait to that. We're torn away from that time with the Lord that we need because of the urgent something matter that needs to be taken care of, that we're thinking about. We want to be taken care of and solved out of the way and focus on that to the neglect of that time with God and His Word. And so this is an interesting contrast here of ways to respond when God comes to your house, when he's in your heart, when he's checking out what's going on in life. And it's sad, because Martha wasn't doing this to be evil. She wasn't somebody who was trying to fool God somehow. She was genuinely wanting to prepare and present her best to her Savior that had come to her house. So something we want to see about what happens when our intentions are good that way. And if we get torn and distracted away from the Lord, it doesn't take long before we start to go down a bad path. Listen to what happens now. Her anxiety levels are going up, do you think? As Sister Mary is sitting there, sitting there, sitting there, sitting there, listening, 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 talking, 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 talking. And the noodles are bubbling over on the stove, right? So Martha's like, choo, 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 choo. all the stuff to be done. And she gets to that point. The anxiety is getting higher and higher and higher. And what do you do when you get anxious? 
you don't think so smart anymore. You have one or two responses. She could have either run away and said, slam the door as loud as she could and said, I'm out of here and gone over to talk to her friend Tizzy that lived down the street. Or what's the other option? Run away or the claws come out. You're going to fight. So here she comes. She chooses with her claws to come out. And listen to what she says. Oof. She came to him and what? She came to him? We would think she'd say, Mary, come here a minute, sister. And then they get back in the back closet. That'd be normal, wouldn't it? She comes to Jesus. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> Claws out. This is time to fix this. Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to do the work by myself? Tell her to help me. Ay, ay, ay. Can you imagine walking up to God saying, get busy taking care of things right? And we do that, don't we? It's very easy. When we get anxious, we get fearful, we get worried to do one of two things, run away from God and hide, or come at him with our claws. God, why don't you get busy doing things right? That was a bold statement, wasn't it? Was she speaking in her right mind at this point? Wasn't there the smartest thing she did in life, probably? I wonder how that would be when she would go back and read the Bible as it was written and say, did I really say that? You know, She was at an anxious point. She was worked up. She was distracted. And she got to the point where she said, God, you got to do something different. God, you got to listen to me. And you can see where it's easy to get the way. Remember now, because she was busy working and providing for him, it's not like she was just trying to brown nose him and selfishly, kind of like they'll do, you know, politics will do sometimes, where it's like, you wash my back, I'll wash yours. This is not, as we know about what we know about Martha, she was not somebody who was saying, I'm just doing this so I can get in good with Jesus, so he owes me. After all, Jesus, remember how good my tender steak was, you know. That's not what she was doing. Why was she doing all this back and forth for Jesus? Because she loved him. She admired him. She respected him. She wanted to provide the best she could for him. That Colossians 1 we read, it talked about, I fill up in my flesh the afflictions that Christ has not completed. It's not saying i got to finish dying on the cross for him because he didn't get done enough to pay for my sins. That's not what that means at all. But rather it's that Jesus in the flesh, in the world, was only here for 33 years. Finished his work, went back to heaven to prepare a place for us. Sends his Holy Spirit into you and me, gives us the Bible, and says, now go make disciples of all nations. It takes effort, it takes presence, it takes applying our minds, our love for people, being able, like he said, that I use all that energy and strength that God supplies me with to fulfill this calling. So Martha was saying, God, I want to serve you. I want to use this strength to do things that matter. It's not that Jesus is looking at her and saying, how dare you, you wicked woman, and throws her out. No. But she needs some redirection, and so do we. When we get worked up and anxious about everything going on, and it doesn't take long before we're accusing God of doing wrong, accusing everybody around us of doing wrong, and <laughs> claws coming out, and it's not all that helpful or good. So the Lord grabs a hold of her attention here as he responds, verse 41, Martha, Martha, the Lord answered, says her name twice. Not again as a way of putting her down, but as a way of saying, whoa, 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 your mind's over here. Whoa, 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 your mind's over here. Martha, come here a second. I want time with you, just us. And he says that to you and to me, too. He says, whoa, 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 your mind's going everywhere at once. Slow down, stop a little bit, and listen to me. Be in my word. As he has her attention now, he says, you are worried and upset about many things, but only one thing is needed. 
Mary has chosen what is better, and it will not be taken from her. Jesus is not saying doing things to serve God and people is wrong. He says to do things that love and serve people and helps them. But he says, don't make a person pick between doing things that serve and help people or spending time with me listening to my word and being strengthened in your faith. He says, Mary picked the better. He says, without that time with God, calming and strengthening and developing our understanding of what he's done and why we serve, then doing all that running around, chaotic serving and doing all these things that make people say, you're such a successful Christian, I wish I could be like you. It can become about us. It can become about we're earning our way into heaven. and That's the wrong direction, God says. You're going to be anxious all the time if you think your deeds are going to earn your way into heaven. He says, remember, take time to stay plugged in. I am the Savior, not you. And as you remember, I love you just who you are, broken though you are, hardships though you're facing, uncertainties and difficulties, I'm there for you. Now let's go. See, he takes a hold of Martha and says, I want you to be together with Mary, the both of you having both the best, being fed and nourished by my word and my spirit, my presence, my encouragement, my remembrance of calm down, it's okay. Think things through, and then go and take care of things. But also going and taking care of things. You know, that's where Philippians 4, God talks about that. He says, don't let your anxiousness be stirred up within you, but by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving to God, remembering it's okay, because God's in charge. Then let the peace of God that you bring those prayers to, let your heart and your mind be in Christ Jesus. And that's a gift that he gives to Christians that... We go out there and we encounter people that don't know the Lord. They don't have. They don't have that assurance that God of all ages that created them and forgave their sins is with them. You and I do. We're sinful nature people. Sometimes we forget that. So the Lord takes that time to remind these people. He loves all of them. Martha and Mary and the rest that are with him too. He reminds you and me today that in the midst of whatever's going on in our lives, there's plenty of things for us to get worked up and worried about. To be able to remember, God, help me to take time to be with you. To spend time listening at your feet. Having you remind me it's going to be okay. And then help me to go ahead and take care of things that need to be. And this is a, a strength and a blessing that the Lord offers to us. Saying, you know, you're being successful is not that you outshined somebody else at how diligently you did God's things, but rather you're successful in that. You know that I am your Savior, I am your hope, I am your joy, and I am your confidence. And that propels us then to say, thank you, Lord. <sighs> to breathe and calm down, and then to go ahead and to serve our Lord one day at a time. So we ask that he will help us with this in our own lives, our own struggles we face, and help us to bring that encouragement and hope to those around us. They need it. There's so much anxiety going on around us now. People need the Lord, just as we do. And we're so thankful that he is there and pray for his continued nurturing for us in that calm that he provides. We ask for this for us all. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's stand. Let's come to our Lord in prayer together. Just a second, I think I got my prayer list snagged. Yeah, there it is. Snagged off where it should be. Okay. Heavenly Father, we do thank you that you are our ever-present help in time of need. You are our comfort, our strength. You are the one who has blessed us with twice born being who we are as a human being first in your image being created and gifted. Secondly, being born by your Holy Spirit, bringing us to saving faith in Jesus, forgiving our sins, 
heading us on the way towards heaven. Thank you for this blessing. We pray as your people that still live in this world and still face a lot of tough things to deal with, we pray for your help day by day, one day at a time with your strength. Help us to remember that when we're too busy to spend time with you and your word, we're too busy and to be able to make sure that that's a priority so that we're prepared to deal well with anxieties and struggles of life as they come our way. Help us through the things that need to be taken care of. Thank you for all the things you have helped us through up to this point, for your mercy and your care for us, your forgiveness when we've gone off track. We pray then that you would continue to strengthen us in this relationship with you and help us then to pursue being able to serve you in the ways that we can in our lives, how we're able with the relationships with people we have, strengths that we have, opportunities we have, time that we have from your hand of mercy. We pray that you grant your healing and your strength to all who are facing hardships and difficulties in so many ways that they come in this world and for your care and help for everyone. Lord, some specifics in Jesus' name we pray today. We Pray for your blessing on Kathy Wheeler's son, Jeremy, as tomorrow he will undergo his brain surgery for a tumor. Please grant him that it will go well and heal him to your glory and praise. We pray earnestly, Lord, for your sending the rains that we need. The dry and withering land reminds us of what life is like if you are not our blessing, helping God. So help us, we pray, with the rain that you can send by your hand and let us, as things return to green, again, praise you for your providing for us in time of need. We pray for your help, dear Lord, and all the strife and unrest going on all around different levels, whether it's in our family situation, whether it's in our town, whether it's in our nation, whether it's in the world around us. We pray and turn to you and ask, Lord, please deliver us and help us in these difficult situations that we see so many places going on. And we pray that you will bless the Quilting Ladies Christmas in July efforts to serve you this week. And it will be a time not only to be a blessing of time and interaction with the joy of the crafts that have been figured out how to make and provide for people's enjoyment and use, but also a little bit time to build and strengthen relationships with each other as Christians together, as well as with the people in our community. These things then, and all others that are in our hearts, we pray in the name of Jesus, thanking him for coming to be in our hearts, in our homes, in our lives, and praying together the prayer that he has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let's go ahead in the back of our bulletin. Let's join in confessing together our faith our Lord has blessed us with, with the creed, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Well, this is the week the Lord has made, so let us rejoice in it and make it count for him. The Lord then bless and keep each of you. Lord, make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. Lord, look upon you with his favor and grant you his peace. Amen. Thank you for being here. God bless and be with you. Another hot week ahead, and we'll hopefully, with God's help, make it through, and hope to see you then next Sunday.
Steve. 